All right, everybody, welcome back to Ask a Pastor. I've got uh, Josh Shedder here from Morden, and of course, you all know Riley by now. Today. <laughs> um, so today, we've, we've got a really interesting topic. Uh, Josh has put a lot of time into the doctrine of the lesser magistrate. So, brought in the expert, we're going <laughs> to... <laughs> We're going to have a good discussion about it. We needed an American for this We needed an American, uh, really. The is. man with the lit mind that uh, loves liberty. So. <laughs> <Right on. clears throat> so, Riley, can I get you to open up in prayer? Absolutely. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for uh, the truth of your word, which is applicable to every area of life. Uh, Lord, as we now discuss uh, this particular doctrine and, and some related topics, we ask for wisdom and clarity. Uh, Lord, and we pray that you would use uh, this platform to get your message out to a wide audience. Lord, may you be glorified in all that is done and said here today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, Josh, um, you've got a bit of a story. Uh, you're not from here, but you are from here. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got here, what were the circumstances, maybe about, about your schooling, and uh, yeah, let's just start with that. Sure. Uh, so like Riley said, I'm an American, um, Texas. I was born in uh, South Texas. It's important. Yeah. More than the American. <laughs> America's country, and, and so is Texas. So. <laughs> Texas is its own place. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I was born there in, uh, in Corpus Christi, Texas, right on the coast. Uh, then I went to school at uh, Southern Seminary, Southern Baptist Theological Seminary in Kentucky. Um, then I pastored a church in East Texas for four years. Um, and then uh, was called to pastor a church in Morton, Manitoba, which I'd heard of Manitoba, but I, never, I didn't know where it was. Um, I, <laughs> the only way I've heard of it is because I knew uh, Billy Graham's Canadian headquarters was in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Right. And as a kid, I'd be like, Winnipeg, Manitoba, that's a funny sounding name. <laughs> didn't know where it was. Um, so then I connected with this church uh, through uh, a, a job website for pastors, and I didn't know where it was, but he, I got a response immediately, and here I am in Canada. You know, so. <laughs> Uh, what got me thinking or looking into uh, the lesser magistrate was this COVID, you know, that came around and uh, coming from a place like Texas to uh, Canada, uh, I was already kind of reeling at some of the, the differences <laughs> in government and, and yeah. uh, you're only allowed to have one choice for car insurance, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I started reading about it and, and trying to think through it and it took me long time to even kind of process <clears throat> what should be the Christian response, right? Right. Um, and what does the Bible say about it? Okay, so the doctrine of the lesser magistrate, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people are going to hear that and they're going to go, hmm, yeah, that means nothing to me. Right. So why don't you just give us a quick little rundown. Yeah. What is it? What does it mean uh, for Christians? Yeah. And uh, what does it mean, like, just for this time? And then we'll get into the meat and potatoes of it. Okay. So basically, the magistrate is, is the, someone with civil authority. So... Uh, you got your mayor, governor, you, you could even say police chief, uh, city council member, somebody like that who is invested with authority from the state. And lesser means if there is a higher magistrate, say like the governor or the, I guess the premier. Premier Canada. Premier, yeah. <laughs> Their premier is off track as far as, and we'll talk more about this, but right. violating the constitution, violating the law of God. Um, then the magistrates who are under that higher magistrate, so lesser, um, have the duty to resist, yeah. to All say right. to say you're off, you're off track. Now I'm going to help you get back on track by not obeying you, right? Um, so that's a way to uh, lawfully resist, right? And so that's where the the doctrine of the lesser magistrate comes from. It comes. It's based on the understanding that all authority in magistrates is given by God, delegated by God, mm -hmm. right? So if you have a magistrate who is off the rails, like I said, they're, they're, they're violating the Constitution, they're, they're, they're um, becoming tyrants, then you can hold them to account to this higher law, this higher rule, because God has given them authority and they are, they are rebelling against their, where their authority comes from, right. from God, um, or where their authority comes from the Constitution. Right? Right. Um, so then you, who, who a citizen underneath these magistrates can, can say, um, I can hold this magistrate accountable to something higher than that magistrate, right. but I want to do it lawfully. Uh, I don't want to just go to the parliament and burn it down, right? Right. So well, I'm going to. Of it. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to <laughs> protest, right? We're, I'm, we're we're given the right to protest, right? right. Peacefully, right? Not rioting. Um, 
But I want to resist, so there's protest and then there's resistance. I want to resist against an unjust law. So I'm going to go to my local magistrate, who is also given authority by God, who God has put into that place. Right. And I'm going to ask him to stand for me in between this unjust law or this higher magistrate and me to interpose between us. So the lesser magistrate, the guy who you go and talk to, mm -hmm. actually intercedes for you. Exactly. Yeah. And he has, he, he's been invested with authority as well. So we right. are lawfully resisting an unjust authority by submitting to this just authority. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we are, we are saying this lower level governor, this lower level mm -hmm. official, has the duty before God mm -hmm. and his constituents mm -hmm. to resist unjust laws. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. get an order from on high that's unjust according to God's law and according to the actual law of the land. Mm -hmm then that the duty of that lower level magistrate, you know, as you said, police chief, police officer, police officer. Uh, you know, mayor, governor, <clears throat> premier, whatever it is, mm -hmm. has the real responsibility both to the law of the land and to God yep. to say, no, we will not follow that unjust law. Yeah. 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 And in a lot of circumstances we'll end up being the fringe minority. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah. So we, we've got, obviously already, we've got some uh, mashing of the American and, and the Canadian uh, branding. We've got the governors and we've got the premiers. <laughs> so bear with us. We're going to, we'll talk about that a bit too. Yeah. They're tutoring me in the ways of yeah. <laughs> Just to, to jump a little further in what we're talking about here as well. Um, you realize that um, when there are unjust dictates coming down from on high, um, it is always the lesser magistrates that the higher magistrates are relying on to enforce yeah. mm. their yes. their tyranny or yeah. or their unjust mm -hmm. mandates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like when, when you when you look at it that way, you, you think of well the higher ups have all the power. It's like well not really, right? When it comes down to it, who are the people enforcing things on the ground? Right. Right. It is the police officers in those communities. Yeah. It is it is the mayors. It is the uh, perhaps the, the <clears throat> MLAs, the MPs who have really the authority to make change and, and enforce these things or not. Mm -hmm. Well, unless you know, I guess could say, well, not if they bring in the military, which has been talked about, right. but you could even say the generals and the majors and the colonels, mm -hmm. they're lesser magistrates. Right. They say, I'm not going to go in and, and beat up protesters or whatever. You know, I'm not going to go in and do these things. Um, that's wrong for you to do that. And mm -hmm. they stand against the higher magistrate. Right? I actually just heard today that that is happening. Um, one of the guys in Ottawa talked to an officer who actually handed in his badge yesterday. He said, there's a bunch of us, we're handing in our badges because we cannot arrest people who have not done, who have not broken the law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would, would, would you consider that uh, interposition, Josh? To, to me, I, I would see that as a good refusal. Yeah. I, I think um, true interposition, as we're describing it here, mm -hmm. under the doctrine of lesser magistrate, would, would not just be, well, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to do this, so I quit, but rather going to say, no, as the proper exercise of my office mm -hmm. and yeah. the oaths that I've sworn to uphold, I'm not going to enforce this. In fact, I'm going to resist what's coming. Which would be to choose being fired over being over quitting, which I would right. say is, I, I would, is I would taking a stand. I commend that, yeah. 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 But still, yes, absolutely. Uh, thankful for all of the police officers who have refused to yeah. enforce yeah. Yeah. unjust they're, they're doing their job. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's one of the one of the things. Like as we've heard a lot about, um, you know, I think there are a lot of police officers, especially who really don't like um, some of the things that they're being asked to do. Mm -hmm. um, and the common common. Thing that you keep hearing, whether it's on videos of pastors being arrested or, you know, kids playing hockey being arrested or whatever it is. People sanding the, the arenas. And right. Stuff. Um, what you keep hearing is this refrain, well, I'm just doing my job. Yeah. yeah. I'm just doing my job. And what the doctrine of the lesser magistrate says, it speaks to that concept so directly and says, no, 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 no. Your job is not to um, unquestioningly follow mm -hmm. anything that comes down, but your job is to uh, serve the people, yeah. right? And um, it, it's it's this question of who are you truly answerable to, right? Yeah. Is there a higher authority 
above, you know, whoever the, <coughs> the unjust ruler is. Um, and so your true job is to be faithful to God yeah. yes. and, is, and is to be faithful to the Constitution. The Constitution. In, in the States, uh, I don't know if it's, uh, I know it's in the military, pretty sure it's in the military, and for police officers, they swear to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. It's mm -hmm. not, I swear to uphold and defend my captain yeah, and or what, the and president. And whatever he might say to me ever. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah, it's to the Constitution. So yeah. whoever comes in as president or, or prime minister or whatever, I, the Constitution stands. Yeah. So I have to hold whoever comes in to that, yeah. right? And that's the job of every police officer, every... Yeah military member yeah. yeah so i want to jump back to our absolute favorite passage on this show <laughs> uh, which is romans 13. wow um, i mean we're back there again and, yeah. and i'm totally fine with it i mean i can, I can do it from first peter i guess if you prefer <laughs> no no let's go to romans 13. so just it's the most it's the most uh poorly tra or uh interpreted. poorly interpreted tra uh scripture of the last two years yeah yeah um so here again we are told to be in subjection uh, to the governing authorities yeah. uh, because they are God's servant for your good. Okay? So every magistrate, every person of civil office, every police officer, every um, whatever your office is, uh, what is your job? Well, according to the highest law that there is, mm -hmm. you are God's <clears throat> servant for the good of the people. And yeah. you are called, you are God's servant for our good. Um, and then it tells the citizens, but if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Right? So you have this concept that it, civil authority is good and legitimate and is appointed by mm -hmm. God to punish evildoers. For a particular reason, yeah. But notice here, what it doesn't give is the authority of those civil magistrates to determine right and wrong for themselves right right and so um your job police officers is to in, is to enforce that which is truly right mm -hmm. okay your superior officers don't get to determine what is right and wrong and so if you do get commanded to do something that is immoral something that is wrong if you are required to enforce unjust laws your duty before god as god's servant for the good of the people mm -hmm. is, is to resist in that moment and um and we don't say this lightly because we do recognize as you're talking about with these officers in ottawa yeah. that very likely is costing people their jobs 100 yeah. percent. yeah so we've been in this covid era now for a, a solid two years mm -hmm. um there's been a group of people who who stood in resistance for those two years. Mm -hmm. um, we stood in resistance to the police. We stood in resistance and calling calling on the mayors to to hear our voices and do something. But nothing's happened. What what's the point of even talking about the lesser magistrate if they're not going to do anything? Well, because if the danger is if you if you see that there's an unjust law. If you see if there's um, a tyrant or a tyranny is being instituted, then if you if you're not careful, you'll you'll stray into a violent revolution or something like that, where you're basically taking the law into your own hands. So the doctor of lesser magistrates is is good in that like that text that Riley read. They the, the purpose of the magistrate is for the good of the people and to punish the evildoers. So what if they flip that? Right, they they start <laughs> punishing the good and rewarding the evil. Which is well, what a godless society will do. Yeah, what a um, tyrant will do. So right. then I, I don't think <clears throat> some people would say that the Christian's response is just to lay down and take it. Like, right. I don't think so. Uh, I think scripturally we have many examples of people who recognize unjust rule, who pe they recognize that the, that the ruler has um, rebelled against God, has turned away from God, has turned away from the law of the land. And so Christians have lawfully resisted. So the doctrine of the lesser magistrate gives us a chance, a way to resist lawfully yeah. and so if these magistrates aren't nothing's happening like you said yeah then i would say uh, look for another magistrate i would <laughs> say uh run for office 
I like that. Uh, get a like that. get a vote going to say this guy's going to stand for us. Let's put him in there yes. and let him be the one who. Resists so do we do we sit and do we then now sit and wait for the next term of election or is there some way that we can? Well, I mean, Riley's got something. Yeah, you ask. So you know nothing's happening. So why would we talk about it? It's like well, I think part of the reason why nothing's happening is that nobody has talked about this. Right. Yeah. Right. If the church from the beginning had been doing. Our job, and this is on this is on us. We're we're pastors, and I, I will I will admit, um, I had not thought through these things yeah, in much depth prior to 2020. Right. That's kind of forced this whole discussion of church state relations and everything. But if, if the church as a whole had been speaking and, and doing our job to apply the word of God to all of life, mm -hmm. um, including informing the magistrates as to their duties. Right. It, Im imagine the kind of impact that would have if every church out there had right. had been preaching on um, on Romans 13, explaining to the magistrate, "You are God's servant for the good of the people." So you'd have to have pretty good church unity across the board to make this work. True, yeah. but but you ask why why talk about it if nothing's happening? It's like well, part of the reason we're in the pickle we are <laughs> is yeah. that nobody's yeah. been talking yeah. about because it because we haven't been talking. So let's yeah. let's repent of our of our failure collectively <laughs> as a church <laughs> to to not have preach the word of God to every area of life. Um, and now let's do our best to inform all of the civil magistrates as to their duties before God. Mm -hmm. let, let, us, let us speak into that and, and help uh, teach and be that prophetic voice. Yeah, that's, that's an excellent, yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah that uh, just riffing some more off of this idea of um, I'm just doing my job. Uh, I, I think they call that the Nuremberg defense. Mm -hmm. Right, which didn't really hold up well for the guys in the first Nuremberg yeah. trial. Yeah. Right, uh, the, the Nuremberg trials is uh, post World War II, right. as as the Nazis are being brought on trial for war crimes mm -hmm. um, and ex experimentation and these kinds of things, right. mm -hmm. um, and that was the defense over and over and over again, is that well I was simply doing my job, right? My commanding officer gave me instructions. And I was simply doing my job. And there's a lot of people who get really, really upset if you start to compare what's happening here <laughs> to anything in, in Nazi Germany. But uh, I just want to draw out this connection. The, the reason there's a legitimate comparison is because um, it, it addresses this question. What is the duty of a lower level magistrate mm -hmm. when they've received an unjust order from on high? Right? History does not smile on the officers who committed war crimes right. and then simply said, I was just doing my job. Mm -hmm. um, God <laughs> has not smiled no. on the people who committed war crimes and then said, I was just doing my job. So we understand that category of interposition. Mm -hmm. we, we can easily look and say, okay, when those Nazi doctors or the, when those doctors were instructed by the Nazis to do these horrible things, they should have said no. Yeah. Right? Yes. They should not have complied with that. That was unjust and immoral, and we, we justly punish them for having <coughs> obeyed such wicked orders. Mm -hmm. um, and there's parallels to right now. I mean, we've got experimental uh, drugs that are essentially being forced onto an entire nation. In fact, entire world, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's people who are saying, I'm not interested in being involved. And the government is, is saying, well, it doesn't matter if you're interested or not, this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can draw the parallels of medical experimentation, and I <laughs> yeah. think that's a very important point as well. But still, we get this principle there where, okay, what, what did those uh, officers do wrong? Well, they didn't stand up against the unjust orders. Right, they knew right. what was right, and yeah. they knew what was wrong, yeah. and they chose to just obey yeah. instead of... I mean, they would have received punishment, most likely, yeah. from, from their... Uh, there would have been a cost yeah. to it. There would have been a cost yeah. to it, and there's a cost to what we're doing as people now standing up. I yeah. mean, it's cost people, a lot of people, their jobs. And, and So I, I just want to say, to be clear, <clears throat> when, when we draw these comparisons between what's happening in Canada and uh, what happened in World War II, we are not saying that our government now is as evil right. <laughs> as the Nazis. That's not, no. even, that's not even close to what we're saying. It's not the same scale at all. Um, but the, the same principles would apply, right? Why was it wrong, or what was wrong with those lower level uh, officers. Yeah. Well, they didn't interpose and do their duty before God and to their nation when given unjust orders. Right. And and we're saying the same thing. Uh, when any unjust order, regardless of how heinously evil it is, right, whether it is, you know, 
shipping off Jews to concentration camps, or shutting down church services, both of which are unjust actions of civil governments. Um, the responsibility of the lower level magistrate is the same. Mm -hmm. They need to say, no, right. I, I will not uh, be complicit in this. I will not participate in this. I have a duty to God and to the people that I have sworn to, uh, to protect and, and serve. Um, and and that, is, that is the higher authority and uh, that is the best thing they could do uh, as um, office holders. Um, okay. <clears throat> So you're you're not a, you're not a traitor for doing that. that that's right. the point. There's a there's a great yeah. scene in uh, in the Voyage of the Dawn Treader, uh, C.S. Lewis, uh, uh, his book in the Chronicles of Narnia, where they're sailing to the end of the world, um, and Prince Caspian is all excited because he wants to go and see Aslan's country. He wants to just go off and be an explorer. Um, and then Reepicheep says, "Well, sir, if that was your desire, then it would be my civil duty as your loyal subject." Uh, to bind you, <laughs> to tie you up, <laughs> and bring you back to Narnia. And Caspian's all flabbergasted. Well, am I not king? Um, are, is it not your job to, uh, to listen to me? Um, and they say, no, no, no. My, my job is to uphold my, uh, my office. My like the, the, the loyal thing to do there uh, in certain situations is to not uh, obey commands <clears throat> when they are unjust commands. So even the, the king, king would be abandoning his people. He would be abandoning his people. Right. And so all those who helped him would be complicit in the king's rebellion against, mm. in this case, against Aslan. Um, and so there, there's, there's a good illustration. It's like your civic duty, like you are not a traitor if you disobey those unjust orders. Mm. Right? right? That's the most faithful thing you could do uh, in your office. Okay, so <clears throat> we're calling it the doctrine of the lesser magistrate. Mm -hmm. That means there's got to be some biblical precedent, some biblical uh, examples. Mm -hmm. Maybe, um, yeah, maybe Jesus talks about it. Maybe he's got a parable about it. Is there anything well, like that? Uh, doctrine just means teaching. So it's it's, right, a, it, it's something that yeah. we see taught in scripture. Yeah. Uh, a few examples. Um, one of the first ones we see is the Hebrew midwives. If you remember, Pharaoh had ordered um, and empowered these Hebrew midwives. They weren't, they weren't Egyptian. They were Hebrew that when a boy is born, you kill him, because he's saying the, the Hebrews are becoming too many. Okay, so this was in the time of, uh, just before the Exodus. Right. So, <clears throat> he, like I said, he, he had empowered them to kill these babies, right, as they were, they were born, but the Hebrew midwives st said, no, we're not going to do that. Right. And they said, actually, uh, they, they lie. They say that the, the Hebrew women are, are having babies before they even get there. They're so fast. Right. Right. But they refuse to obey this unjust order, right? So that's one example. And, and what you see there is that God rewarded them. Yeah, God rewarded it, them. It's, it's specifically They're commended. Sense. Yeah. yeah. Did they not have babies of their own because of their loyalty to yeah. him? There's a whole worldview question there. That <laughs> the reward they received was children. And, you know, I, yeah, and, right. Do we, do we see children as a blessing? Even yes, today? are children a blessing? But Maybe we'll talk about that one day. That's a good <laughs> topic. But, um, but certainly, they, they are commended by God for yeah. that act of interposition. Mm -hmm. between Pharaoh and the citizens. Yeah, interposition meaning just standing between yeah. um, the tyrant and the people. Yes, right. yes. thank you. Um, another example is in 2 Kings chapter 11. Uh, so the queen Athalia had seized the throne and murdered all her grandchildren. Oh my goodness. So that they what were not... What a psychopath. I know, Sorry. I know, she's crazy. <laughs> so she was prevent... She didn't want them to challenge her for the throne. Right. So the priest Jehoiada gets the captains of the guard and he says here's the king's son he shows them the one son that they had hid away joash here's the king's son will you stand with me and protect him and these captains of the guard are lesser magistrates they are right. they work for the state they're there to protect the king and the queen whoever was in charge and so they say you know what? this is the true king this son so would that young baby or child have been the legitimate king and yes. the queen was just a stand-in or was uh, maybe strong arming she, her way she's in. She's the the mother of the king that died, and so she okay. sees the throne. Yeah, but the so next her king, grandchild, yeah, is the real king. Is the real king? Okay, he was legitimate king, but she wanted it for herself. Right. So the priest says, "Let me get these lesser magistrates." And at the priest, you can make in that case is also a lesser magistrate because they had some power in the in that time, and he says. Here's the king's son, stand at the door, and if anyone comes against the king's son to take him or to kill him, you kill him. And so they do that. They pull out their swords and they stand at the door and protect him. 
And then she hears about it, and then she people recognize that this son is the true king, and then she's toppled, and they put him in place. So the lesser magistrate is standing up against a tyrant. Wow. Second yeah. Kings 11. So that's a good example of a time that it's really worked well. Yeah. 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 And there's, there's actually an example that John Knox uses. Uh, he has a great work where he wrote to the Scottish nobility and asked them to stand as nobles against an unjust queen, right? Um, he uses an example of Jeremiah 36, where Jeremiah has made a prophecy uh, of bad things that are coming to the nation. These nobles, the princes of Judah, hear this, and they, they're scared. They're like, the king is not going to like this. So Jeremiah, you go hide. Yeah. We'll go tell the king. So they go tell the king. They bring the prophecy to the king. And just like they thought, he cuts it up with his knife and burns it. And then he orders Jeremiah's arrest. And so John Knox makes the point. They should have refused and said, no, we know that this is a true prophecy, that God has prophesied this about the nation. We should respond in, in repentance. But instead, they, they were afraid of the king and they protected themselves. And so that's a failure of the lesser magistrates. Right. Right? <clears throat> so John Knox was using that example to the Scottish nobility, saying, don't be like them. Like, be like the, the, the captains of the guard and right. second kings and stand for the truth, stand for law. There's another example where uh, King Saul uh, takes an oath and makes a decree that um, unless, uh, until they win a certain victory, nobody is to eat. Uh, now his own son, Jonathan, had not heard of that decree and he ate some honey. Uh, and now Saul was ready to kill his own son. Uh, but the other soldiers, again, magistrates, mm -hmm. lesser magistrates, those, uh, those officers in the army, um, stood up and said, no, that not one hair on his head is going to be harmed. And so the, the people uh, stood up against the unrighteous decree of the king, mm -hmm. uh, which was going to kill his own son, and Jonathan's life was spared. It's another example of yeah. an interposition by a lesser magistrate there. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Would you consider um, the stand of Queen Esther to be a, a lesser magistrate illustration? Yeah, I think that would be that. You don't think so? I not <clears throat> not quite because she doesn't. She had more. Uh, she doesn't I would say influence than authority. Yeah, she had influence over the king. Yeah, she doesn't. Yeah, she doesn't um, directly defy any order that was given to her. Except for um, don't come into this room or your head will cut, get cut off. Yeah, chance. <laughs> if he doesn't lower the scepter. Yeah, right. I think a case could be made. Yeah, she. They go. They don't go directly to the king. They go to her. Right. And she goes to the and king. She petitions because she's yeah. the yeah. intercessor. Yeah. For the people, to yeah. the king. Yeah, yeah. and and that would certainly be a good example, at least, of, of what we're hoping to see right. uh, from our lesser magistrates, right? Yeah. That that if we go to you, you will be our ally, right? Even if you don't have to disobey something directly, it's like go and and advocate for us, be be yeah. that mediator. And, uh, for me, that that story is is so powerful because she goes to the king with the knowledge that it could cost her her life, yeah, yeah. and and it works out great. Mm -hmm. The, the evil magistrate who was decreeing against the Jews was, yeah. was actually eliminated yeah. in, in the story. And you have, you have um, the higher rule being the king, and it was actually Haman who was not the highest. He was, his, he was the one that was behind all right. that. So she was resisting this Haman by going to a higher, uh, a higher law, yeah, right. basically. Yeah. And then I think actually we have the, these biblical examples, but I think the strongest case to make is simply to look at the fact that all authority is delegated authority, mm -hmm. right? God is uh, the one who grants all authority. Um, and no earthly authority has the right to decide for themselves what is right and wrong. Um, so Romans 13, I actually think, would be one of the strongest yeah, cases so. to push for the doctrine of lesser magistrate if you want to look at what is your duty before God, mm -hmm. right? And um, r related to that is our preamble to our charter, uh, in this yeah. nation, which I and I, um, so there was a the court case in uh, process right now. Right. If I understand correctly, was <laughs> the last surviving signer of our mm. Charter of Rights and Freedoms yep. uh, from 1982 yeah. when that one was yeah. made. Um, I'm asking the American about Canadian history, right? right? <laughs> because he's been looking into it. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, and he made just the very clear point, which the American founders understood which is that clause in our preamble, which says um, that we are acknowledging the supremacy of God and the rule of law, right? That is over and above yeah. everything. That's not just a throwaway that sentence. Involved. That is That's not a throwaway sentence. 
Um, and the fact is, if there is no God, there are no God-given rights, mm -hmm. right? If there is no, and, and what the rule of law basically means is that nobody has sovereignty mm -hmm. in themselves, yeah. right? We, we, we do not have a system with, with the divine right of kings where the king can speak and his word is law. Right. right, that's not our situation. <clears throat> difference between Rex Lex and Lex Rex. Right, the law is king, or the king is law. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and so our our system recognizes God alone has supremacy. God alone has sovereignty. God has a law that is higher than any law of our land, um, and these are the rights and freedoms that follow from that reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's because God is supreme, and that we have rights. Um, and so when we are now appealing to lower magistrates uh, on the basis of God's law, we are actually j simply doing the same thing that our own Canadian constitution does, yeah. which is pointing back to the supremacy of God and the rule of law, mm -hmm. right? This, you are not a traitor to your country if you interpose as a lesser magistrate. You are upholding our constitution mm -hmm. um, and your, your duty before God to whom you will give account one day. And you're recalling the higher magistrate's duty to serve, to be deacons. Yeah. You're not a ruler with an iron fist. You're a servant of God and in service to the people by rewarding the good and punishing the evil. Yeah. But even if you look at our magistrates that we do have, <clears throat> they are elected officials mm -hmm. who work for the people. Right. They're paid mm -hmm. by the people to work for the people. Mm -hmm. They're not paid to rule over the people. Yeah. Right. And that, this has basically been what's so horrifying about the last two years is that we've had essentially the suspension of uh, democracy, right? Yes. Because it's it's not been our elected representatives that have been making the policy decisions, no, no. right? It, it, is, it has been unelected um, white coats, <laughs> right? The, the, the medical Public experts who, who, who have been, you know, our, our elected officials have basically given over everything to, to them. To um, appointed men, right? These are appointed people. They're right. not, 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 not chosen, yeah, not yeah. elected, that's right. Um, and, and so even our, our regular uh, legislative sessions mm -hmm. and everything were just closed down yes. for yeah. however long. And it's like, even if you had a grievance about things through our representative system, it was shut down by this. Uh, yeah. What recourse was there for the people? And then even the, the protests were then illegal. Um, and then, and you know, they're pushing for more and more online censorship. It's like, mm -hmm. where in the world are people supposed to go? Well, that was what's, what was dangerous about putting the power in the hands of the public health is they kept saying, we'll follow the science and we need to look and see what, what viruses and what we're supposed to do in response and all these things. Well, the problem with that is if you follow the science, according to them, will science tell you what is morally right? No. No, it won't. So they're, they're, they're putting everything, they're sacrificing everything to, to, to stopping a virus when there's no thought to what are the other ramifications spiritually and, and mm -hmm. emotionally and mentally. Well, science is, I mean, you can do some studies that may take a while, but even then science is gonna tell you, okay, this is what's <clears throat> morally good. This is, what's, this is where uh, a leader should stand on truth. It's not gonna tell you those yeah. things. So they have to go to God. They have to go to the constitution. As an ironclad, this stands no matter what virus yeah. comes through. Yeah. It was such a horrifying statement from uh, um, Justice Joyal in our char charter challenge um, when he basically said, uh, who am I to judge public health orders? Who am I to judge the, the medical experts? It's like, you have a judge asking, who am I to judge? Yeah. Wow, that's, that's terrible. It's like, we're, we're not, we're not like, <laughs> Your job you here. are to judge. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. is what your position is. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And and your responsibility before God is to is to judge justly, to judge righteously. Right. Um, on the basis of law, not medicine. And who who will intercede for uh, for the people? I, I talked with Brennan, you guys may remember him from Ask a Pastor a few weeks ago. Uh, I met him in Winnipeg today, we chatted for a little bit, and he was just talking about the food bank. Uh, the number of people who have who've lost incomes mm -hmm. and, and can no longer provide for the families they show up to the food bank um and they're they still have all of their stuff because they've just now lost their jobs but they can't feed their families who who intercedes for those people if we don't talk to the lesser magistrate who's gonna do it yeah. so so what are some what are some ways that people here and now can can use this mm -hmm. doctrine for the betterment of our society. 
Well, being from Texas, I'll give you a Texas example. Oh, well, let's let's hear it. There's a number. Don't of mess them. with Texas. Yeah, there's a, there's a number of them actually, but uh, the, one of the more recent ones. Uh, so there's a number of of cities in the state of Texas who have refused to allow abortion within city limits. Hmm. They have passed ordinances saying abortion is outlawed in our city. And of course, you know American law that says, according to Roe v. Wade, which is in the courts now, they're they're talking about that abortion is allowed federally. So these cities are saying, we as the lesser magistrates, these are city councils. We don't really, we're not gonna, we're not, we don't care what Roe v. Wade says. Right. Abortion is unjust. It's immoral. It's a sin. It's an atrocity. So we're gonna outlaw it within our city. So for a few years, we've had little cities here and there in Texas. One in the East Texas near me. But here recently, the city of Lubbock, which I think has half a million people, something like okay. that. Maybe, I don't know, maybe 600,000 people. Like so they're the largest city so far who has outlawed abortion. Um, so that's a lesser magistrate standing up against an unjust law. Mm. So that's an example of something that's happening now. That just recently happened a few months ago. So, was so there, we can do that. Was there a petition? Was there, was there, was the society or the city going to the lesser magistrate and saying, we want this? Yeah, and, and as I understand, putting people in positions, in those positions who would agree. Okay, so they voted in their voice. Basically, yeah. And it's a you know, conservative state, conservative city. Right. Um, so they uh, voted in people who they understood were against abortion, yeah. um, and they petitioned them. And I, I think actually it started in the city council. I don't even know that they, but they had support outside of it. Yeah. Right. Uh, and they passed it by, uh, actually, no, you know what, let me, let me take that back. It was a city vote. So the whole city voted, and uh, as I understand, the number was 63% voted to pass it. Wow, that's... that's so other cities, the, uh, the city council had enacted it. The city of Lubbock put it to a referendum right. and passed it. So there's options there. Let's talk about the, uh, the concept there. It's kind of related to what you're saying of a sanctuary city. Yes, yes. Right. So it, it's funny, actually, because um, this was a concept that... Uh, the first place I ever heard of it was... Uh, places like Colorado declaring themselves uh, sanctuary cities for like Portland, yeah. for marijuana, <laughs> right? And then, you, and then you had or California or, or for yeah. or for illegal illegal immigrants, immigrants right? They, yeah. Yeah. A lot of California cities did yeah. that. So, so I mean, what what that is is an example. Uh, it's lesser magistrate. Yeah. You can argue maybe poorly applied. Um, <laughs> yeah. an, an example of lesser magistrates saying, "No, we don't like what's coming down from above us. Right. We're going to just do our own thing in our city." And you you saw the. the federal government tend to, tended to respect that mm -hmm. um, and so now there's been push for some of the states to and cities to declare themselves sanctuary cities for the unborn for the unborn yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean this this concept is not unknown uh, you know on both sides of the political yeah. aisle yeah. Um, but our, our appeal is that um, it would be on the basis of God and his law mm -hmm. on the basis of our duty to uphold the Constitution right. the, the highest law of our land um, and yeah, you were involved in uh, an initiative in Winkler. You want to talk yeah, about that? so uh, we petitioned the city council of Winkler to declare Winkler a sanctuary city from the mandates, right? Especially the vaccine mandate and right. um, uh, shutting down churches, things like that. Um, and that was voted, every single council member voted against it, essentially. Uh, but we had, um, and we were talking about doing a petition later so we can show this, we had thousands of people supporting us. Right. I remember the, rallies. Yeah, yeah. the paper going around, everybody yeah. signed. There was thousands and thousands of signatures, but yeah. it seemed that the, the Winkler Council just really didn't care about that. Well, um, and I know they have a they have a tough job to, to, to try to, they listen to their constituents and they're like, so I don't want to, you know, just jump on them and bash right. about them, but uh, disagree with their with their conclusion. Um, and in their response, they I appreciated that each one of them responded. Right. And several of the responses were, if we do this, if we declare Winkler a sanctuary city from all these mandates, the province will come in and take over. So essentially they're responding to a threat. They're saying that this is a, if we do this, there's this threat out there and we don't want that. So my response is, uh, would be to them, well, should we govern out of fear? Yeah. Hmm. Should, should we yeah. not govern according to the, the bedrock truth of the constitution and in the word of God? Like if we're just responding out of fear, then and then a, a couple, I think two others were, well, we should just trust the, the medical professionals. Well, again, the problem you're doing is you're reducing everything to COVID. You're not looking at what's the, the effect of the lockdowns and people losing their jobs and yeah. the emotional toll and the all these things that you're not of, considering. Yeah. A lot of collateral damage. Yeah. 
Yeah, which, sure. which, as the leaders of a city, you should be considering that. Yeah. And the first thing you should be considering, Romans 13, is what does God <laughs> say about yeah. this? What's your job? What does the constitution of the land say about right. this? Right. Yeah. So, so I think that the, though it failed in Winkler, we could try it again in yeah. another place, or you know, or even or, in Winkler again. Is that not an option? It could. I mean, the the next step what we were talking about, but uh, it, it hasn't come about, but is getting a peti petition together to show here are the thousands of people who live in Winkler, because you have to prove they're from Winkler. Right. These are thousands of people within Winkler who want this. So I think it would show the city leadership, okay, this is bigger than we thought. So it would just be another fringe minority. Yeah. It could be considered. <laughs> yeah. but, the, but some of the things that we heard was, well, a lot of these people that came to the rallies weren't from Winkler. Right. right. And that so, is true, because I was at the rally. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you live in South Dakota, right? <laughs> somewhere, somewhere, like right along the border, somewhere. Yeah. So, so if we had a petition, we could. You, you have to make sure that everyone on the petition is from Winkler, and I think we would have had a significant number of people, yes. and it would have surprised people. But there may be other cities that this can be tried in. Yeah. Right. And again, we talked about before we came on. I'm not as as up to date on how much power a city council has in Manitoba or in Canada. It's different. In, in right. Texas, you have counties, you have county sheriffs. Here, I think they're called RMs. Yes. Have Reeves, yeah. Reams. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you can go to the county sheriff in Texas and ask them not to enforce an unjust law. And he could say, yeah, and he could tell all of his deputies, we're not going to enforce this. So right. could they do that here? I mean, we'd have to see about that. But Well, the, uh, the, so I guess uh, you would have county sheriff, but you'd also have marshals and different different uh, forms of law enforcement. The FBI would also yeah, not, federal, wouldn't fall so, underneath you know. the jurisdiction of the, of the no. sheriff. And that's the thing. People say, and, and the threat was the province will come in and take over, or like if you're in Texas and you, the county sheriff doesn't enforce something, well, the state police could come in, or right. the federals could come in. My response is, I don't. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for one thing, the logistics would be kind of a barrier for this. You know, <laughs> yeah. Like, the, the, the threat when we were talking to Winkler was, well, the, the province can come in, or they can send in you know, RCMP or whatever. I don't think they want that. No. You know, like you want to federalize a city because they're, you know, like it's... Yeah, like if you picture a unified police force saying we will not enforce these unjust laws, for, for one thing, it's very unlikely, I think, that, mm -hmm. that the government, the federal government or provincial government would want that fight to no, understand. No, I don't think so. But it's like even pictured, okay, what would that look like? Is the RCMP going to march all of the police of Winkler out of their positions? Mm -hmm. Like, do they have that? It, that is just an absolute mess. Um, yes. And, and it would be the kind of mess that would gain attention. It would force them to defend their reasoning for coming yes, in and right. strong arming all these people. And, right? right, and then you'd have to have justification that the crony was actually bad enough to right. to authorize this kind of a move. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So basically, the um, with any law that's enforced, the majority of people, of citizens, have to be enforcing it on themselves. Mm -hmm. Right, Police cannot be... Um, they just won't be able to keep up with it uh, if everybody is is defining something all together or they all the time or they <laughs> had to turn it turn it to uh, uh, East Germany where they had the the Stasi who were going and cracking people's skulls. Right, that's the only way you could do it to yes. force people who are not wanting to be yeah. submit. Yeah, but yeah, I guess it could come to that. But, uh, yeah. So uh, just to draw some application and maybe wrap this up here. Um, one of the things we would encourage people to do would be to um, petition your civil magistrates, yeah. uh, right? So call, call email. them, email them, uh, l let them know, especially those who have um, mm -hmm. paid a cost to this point, and there, and there have been a few. Yeah. Um, let them know that you appreciate them. Um, let them know that you're behind them and are supporting mm -hmm. them for the, the good things that you have heard them saying, uh, and then call on them to greater faithfulness. Yeah. Uh, it is it is amazing how much it strengthens you to know that there are people behind you. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, email your your local magistrates, mm -hmm. whether it's your MLAs, your MPs, your mayor, yep. your police chief, your whomever, um, and and call for them to honor God and honor the Constitution yeah. uh, to, to rule justly. So <clears throat> to close it though, mm -hmm. I'd really like to just talk about the one who intercedes for us. Mm -hmm. So, would either of you like to talk about him a little? <laughs> yes, definitely. I assume we're talking about Jesus Christ. Right. I mean, I mean, he's not a lesser magistrate. No. He is no. king of kings and lord of lords, but, but he, he intercedes yeah. to the Father. Yeah, the Father, in, in Romans it says that he is the most just and the justifier, because right. 
he is the one who requires payment for sin because he is a holy God. He's created us, uh, men and women, to, to reflect his glory, to honor and worship him. But we have turned inside to worship ourselves or, and to, to worship our evil desires and to make gods of ourselves. Right. So that requires payment for that sin because we have sinned, we have rebelled against the holy God. So God and his, his wrath rests on us because of our rebellion. But Jesus is the mediator, is the intercessor who stands between the wrath of God, his Father, and our sin, or, and us. And, that, and the way he does that is, is, is the, our sin was placed on him on the cross. And so God's wrath is spent on the cross. So that's why God is just, because there is payment for sin. He provided it in his son. Right. His son goes willingly. But he's also the justifier in that he, he provided his son to, to pay for the sin. <laughs> To, to, to justify, to justify us. his, yeah, exactly, yeah. to ju justify us and to satisfy his wrath. Yeah. And so it's, it wasn't a payment to Satan. No, no. It was a payment of the Son to the Father to appease his wrath against sinful men. Yeah, and so now Christ is our intercessor. Mm -hmm. uh, Hebrews talks about how Christ is at the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf. Right. Um, uh, First John says, if anybody sins, they have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous, yeah. um, and so there is that that same concept of somebody standing between. Yeah. Uh, right. So yeah. as we're talking, lesser magistrate to stand between, um, you know, the higher level magistrate and the people. Yeah. Uh, in a similar way, Christ stands between the Father and us and advocates for us, mm -hmm. um, and uh, his the basis of his intercession is his finished work. Mm -hmm. Right. He is essentially yeah. saying. Uh, Father, for, forgive them because of what I've done on their behalf. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and what's so encouraging to know is that the Father will not turn away his son. Mm -hmm. right? well, what, whatever, whatever might happen with uh, lesser magistrates standing up to their higher level magistrates, you know, they may not be listened to. Yeah. We, we are confident the Father will not turn away yeah. his son, his sacrifice. And those who are within in his son. Exactly. And so if you have Christ as your advocate, as your mediator, uh, you are completely, uh, you can be completely confident mm -hmm. of your salvation because um, yeah, if you are united to Christ by faith, you will not be turned away. Awesome. For him to be your, your, your advocate, your mediator, and you be united to him, it takes repentance and faith. So yeah. turning yes. from your, your uh, making God of yourself, turning away from your sin, and putting your faith in Christ as the one to make that payment for your sin. So understanding you're a sinner and that he paid for your sin. Right. And he alone uh, can pay for your sin and appease the wrath of God. That's repentance and faith. Yeah. Awesome. What an amazing discussion. Uh, super, super happy to have Josh, the expert here, and, uh, and Riley. Because I read a book. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, education just means that you know how to memorize, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, so thank you so much, Josh, for coming oh, out. Yeah. And thanks again, Riley, for, for helping host, I guess. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, yeah, it's been... It's been amazing and all to the glory of God. Mm.